the society in the Australian colonies of Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland became <clears throat> pardon me, more complex in its wealth groups because of the gold strike. In this video, we'll talk about the gold strikes and the effects on society as a whole. It's Michael Bischel, Australian historical fiction writer, here once more, and I'm delighted to shine some light on how society changed as a result of the massive gold discoveries. Changed many ways, but I think what we're going to talk about now is pretty important. Tellingly, like the previous video, Australia's basic Anglo-Celt-European ethnicity was now challenged by a potpourri of other cultures and nations. Now, the suddenness and density of this change led to fear of those already domiciled in the country, and this led to racism and exclusion of these new migrants, as you heard in the previous video. Additionally, and there's always these people around, self-righteous people saw gold as the devil's treasure and every facet of it would only lead to destruction. How its attraction led men and women to leave good paying jobs and families. How the mining of the metal had led to fights, it led to corruption and it led to theft. How the wealth that gold generated was mostly dissipated in grog and licentious entertainment. So, in many cases, those who, who did became fabulously wealthy from the gold fields. And, but these people had little skills in being able to manage the degree of wealth that was now in their hot little hands. Sort of shades of people who win big lottery and we tried to talk to them three years later and see how they're going, many of them failing. Riches became the test of a man's position or woman's. There was one quote saying that your father might have been my Lord of England all over, but it goes for nothing in this equalising colony of gold and beef and mutton. Interesting quote. In a pamphlet edition in Victoria, 1852, William Beckett, Chief Justice of Victoria wrote, and I quote, does the discovery of gold in Victoria deserve to be considered a natural, nat national blessing or a national curse? There were tradesmen like butchers and barbers who became fabulously wealthy and for themselves equal to the landed gentry and pastoralists of the time. They saw, hey, we're, we're the same guys. Now, this may well have been the case, however, but those who had struggled and had risked everything and had persevered and had worked hard over many years to achieve a modicum of success and wealth, these people paid little service to those who had become fabulously wealthy overnight. There was resentment, and probably understandably so. However, the lure of the metal did attract civic-minded and intelligent people to New South Wales and Victoria, and that was a bonus for society in general. And this is a great, one of the good knock-on effects of the gold rush. Not all of these diggers became rich, and, and many, pro probably the majority, got very little from the ground. But that did not stop them from seeing the, the attractiveness of Australia as a place of opportunity, a young country, that this was not necessarily granted in the place of their birth. Henry Parks, in his Empire newspaper in 1851, August, said that gold had attracted not only the avaricious and the worldly, but the gifted, the enterprising and the brave spirited. So, to those who maybe had not been fortunate in the gold fields, proved themselves able tradesmen, good farmers, astute business people, and loving fathers and mothers to the future generations of Australians in all ethnic classes. By the end of the gold decade, Melbourne was often characterised by drunken louts, blaspheming diggers, rushing from townhouse to townhouse, while flinging money around like dust and running right in the streets. This was no exaggeration. And also prior to 1850, the, the outward manifestations or appearances of wealth, like big houses, mansions, horse-drawn, polished gigs, and phaetons and carriages, now they were the, the representative signs of people who had acquired wealth over many, many years, or perhaps had inherited it. Not so in 1860 though, no, no, entirely different. It was quite common to see mansions, smart and polished gigs and carriages 
and, 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 and fashion, all part and parcel of labourers and tradesmen who had struck it rich in the gold fields and had the means and wherewithal to purchase those refinements that other people had taken many, many years of hard work, effort and risk taking to achieve. Tempers frayed, attitudes hardened from those previous pastoralists and, and wealthy business people to the newly rich and lucky diggers. It was just one indication of a rapidly changing society brought about solely by the suddenness and magnitude, so it, how quickly it was and the size of it, of gold discoveries of the early Victorian period. In the next video, we'll look at the real hard-hitting economic gains that gold produced. It's Michael Pischel signing off for now, and thank you for watching the video.